Welcome to the very first episode of Tiny Tips and Tricks with Bob and Chris of Titan Tiny Homes. Uh, today we're going to answer a lot of your DIY type questions and uh, just kind of get into the nuts and bolts of what we do as far as building tiny houses and help out a lot of you guys out there that are building uh, your own tiny house and maybe you have some questions about how to build and things of that nature. So right off the bat, I just wanted to say thank you for giving us the opportunity to do this show and uh, following us on Facebook uh, has really given us uh, the opportunity to, to bring this uh, to the table. So uh, as we go through this today, uh, feel free to, I'm going to be constantly refreshing uh, my computer screen to see if I can uh, get the comments uh, to the to the feed and I'm not sure if it's going to screw up broadcast or not so I'm going to be careful with that. Do you want to try to get them, get it up on your phone? Sure. See yeah. if we can because this is trying to I think I think it's trying to broadcast and also um, yeah I'm going to I'm going to ditch that effort. And okay. Just let this thing do its course. Um, one of the things that we're going to do today is we're going to open it up to some some calls. So we've got um, some people gonna, that are going to call in and uh, ask their questions. And as long as the sound quality and things work out, then we're going to make that a regular habit where you can call in and we can just get a real dynamic uh, phone call conversation going and, and really just kind of go through and answer the questions as they come about. Right off the bat, um, we had a question come in yesterday through our general info box and it said, um, is there a special way that you should attach the siding uh, to the side of your tiny house? And the way that I answer that is uh, yes. So as you're, and this is gonna be kind of difficult to explain without some visuals, so let me, let me grab some visuals here. So right here I have a piece of siding, and what you're gonna wanna do is if this is if this is the side of your house, you're gonna to wanna to lap the siding from back to front so that the pieces go that way. That way when you're going down the road, you have aerodynamics um, and you won't have pieces that blow open because they catch the wind. So you wanna make sure that we lap from, from, so start with the farthest to the back trailer and then you move towards the front. And that way um, you're not gonna catch the wind behind the pieces and, and they're not going to blow off so it makes it very streamlined so that was one question we had um, another question we had was about the weight and different ways that you can you know kind of cut the weight obviously one of the ways that we can cut the weight is uh, through our through our wall panels and um, that's probably the most ultra light way to go about it but if you can't you know pop the dollar for for the wall system we totally get that uh, steel studs is definitely going to be another way you're going to want to go, um, and then and then just just keep in in mind that kind of break it down into components, right? So um, most of your plywoods and flooring and stuff like that is going to have um, you know weights on the boxes, and just do the simple math, and you can start to add up what's gonna what's gonna work, what's not gonna work. Uh, do we have any questions coming in? Anything? <clears throat> nothing yet. Nope, nothing yet. What questions are you getting? On, uh, you know, because you're you're talking to a lot of people yeah. on a regular basis. Yeah, I get a lot of questions. Pretty much uh, a lot of the same questions come through the info box on a daily basis. Um, I, mean, I think a lot of it's going to be, you know, parking. That's that's definitely number one. I think at this point, uh, where to park the tiny home and. Um, it's always best. I mean, if you guys email me through the info box, um, I do have certain websites that I kind of keep track of. They're not, it's not 100%, um, you know, for everyone's location, but I do find it pretty helpful for some of our customers. So you can email me through the info box at info at titanchicago.com. Um, I can send you the link to the website that I like to use, and um, I send it over to all our customers pretty much when they're looking for placement. Um, but really, it's up to your local uh, zoning and building you know, codes on where you can allow uh, placement for your tiny home. So that's something you wanna check with with the, with the local municipalities. You got something. Okay. How does one, let's see, Ryan goes, 
how does one go about registering a tiny home with the DMV? Is it just a trailer, et cetera, et cetera? All right, so that's a good question. So there's a lot of ways that that we can, that people are registering the tiny houses. It all depends on how you purchase, right? So if you purchase from a tiny home manufacturer, um, such as ourselves, we're gonna register the tiny home as an RV travel trailer. It's gonna have a VIN number and it's gonna be registered just as an, as an RV travel trailer. Um, and then we can also go ahead and add the NOAA certification as well. And then that's gonna allow it to be a full-time living uh, dwelling unit. But as far as being on the road, it's a, mobile, uh, it's a mobile unit. So we need to have a VIN number that matches the description of the, of the structure. A lot of tiny house uh, companies uh, are buying tiny house uh, foundation trailers from the trailer manufacturers. And basically that trailer comes with its own VIN number. The problem is, is it's gonna be registered from the DMV as a, as a special equipment trailer. That's a problem because let's say you were let's say you couldn't see and all somebody could tell you was the description of the VIN number. When they type that in, they're gonna say, okay, it's a special equipment trailer, but then it's really not because it's got this whole structure on top of it. So the way that it really comes down to a real technical way of doing things, the way they end up classifying those types of tiny homes without getting a crazy detail is, it becomes essentially a load on top of a trailer. So it really doesn't identify exactly what it is. So the way we do it here at Titan Tiny Homes is we register the VIN number so that it's an RV travel trailer. And when, you, when your tiny house leaves here, it's gonna leave with a title that's gonna say a make, model, length, weight, and everything. Um, so that you can get the proper insurance and also it's for financing purposes. You know, we want to make sure that uh, the bank knows exactly what they're financing. And when you do a special equipment trailer, it leaves so much open for uh, question and really just trying to figure out uh, what what's really going on. So the way I'd really answer that is you want to make sure you go with a tiny house builder that's going to uh, title and VIN your tiny house as a tiny house or as an RV travel trailer or some sort of mobile structure in its entirety when it's complete, not just as a heavy equipment trailer or a flatbed trailer or a custom enclosed trailer. It's just not that. It's, it's a mobile structure that happens to be a house, tiny house, RV trailer, whatever you want to call it after that is really up to the manufacturer. But at the very least, you want to make sure you go with a company that's going to um, embody what that, what that VIN number actually is at the end of the day when it's all set and complete. Well, not to not yeah. to bring up um, you know other companies as well, but what do you think about companies that are using their you know if they can't do the RVIA um, certification, they're saying, well, the reason why we don't have it is because these are not built for year-round living. That's kind of what they're saying. So, how would you? I think it's a tactic. I think that because um, that's something I've kind of seen a lot in the past couple weeks. Okay, so you know everybody's got to push their own agenda. And, um, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, it's a tough one to answer because for us, we abide by the RVIA, which is the Recreational uh, Vehicle Industry Association, but we also build to the, to the NANCY code and, um, and the IRC code. So our houses are above and beyond what the RVIA requires. See, if you, if you look at the RVIA code, they care about the Nancy code, but they also, and that's the fire code, but they also care about uh, just overall safety. You know, is your propane uh, hooked up correctly? Is your electrical wired correctly? Is your plumbing done? Is your venting done the proper way? That's really it. In fact, verbatim, I was told from a RVIA inspector that, and I don't know if I'm supposed to repeat this or not, but um, <laughs> we don't care if it's built out of cardboard. We just want this stuff. And, that, and that's really the reason why when people say, well, RVIA means you can't live in it uh, full time. Well, yes, just with the RVIA certification, that is correct because they're not checking structural. They're not checking all those integrity um, points. They want, their whole thing is safety. They do not want a Roman candle on wheels going down the highway. Well, yeah, you know, the, the last thing you want to do is pull into an uh, RV or campground or whatever, hook up to electricity and 
it's a liability for the campground or you know yeah and park it, at that point so right and 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 the other thing is it's a total benchmark for um, for the banking industry and also the insurance industry they want to make sure that the very least I mean if a tree falls on your house or extreme wind conditions or whatever um, you know, the RBIA is not there to protect those kind of anomaly situations. They're there to protect and make sure that out of no random circumstance does it just start on fire or you have a sure. gas leak or a venting issue in the plumbing system, something like that. Those are their key focuses. Now, when you get into the uh, NOAA certification, that's the only one that I know of that's accredited by at least three different uh, insurance agencies at this time. They've yet to get a financial institution behind them. But here's the catch. So we're RVIA certified. There's nothing that says we can o that we can't over-certify our units. So we can do RVIA and we can do a NOAA certification. Now, NOAA certification is gonna add about $750 to $1,000 on your overall bill, depending on uh, the circumstances. But what that'll allow you to do is it'll allow you to take your tiny house. Now it'll be RVIA certified as well. And all that is is just a double check and balance. Every institution has a different way of classifying uh, their, uh, what they want to finance or what they want to insure. So the banks are yet to identify NOAA as, a, as an accreditable source, uh, accreditable source for the financing world. But they are credible with the, with the insurance. So the way we combat that is we just do an RVIA certification and now you can get financing on your product and you can also uh, get it certified to be lived in full time. Now I know there's other organizations out there that are creating their own institutions. Um, in my opinion, it's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of because why would you waste all that time when there's people that are working day and night to fight for this industry and have made incredible strides in the last two years? Why you would ever want to start another organization and confuse the industry up even more is beyond me, but I mean, that's a yeah. whole other deal. Yeah, I mean, I think as far as my point is, you know, the RBIA certification is definitely key, and we go above and beyond. We over-engineer every aspect of our homes, over-insulate them. Uh, we have customers living in these things uh, year-round in colder climates. I mean, obviously, we're located in Chicago, um, but I think that's a main, main concern is having them certified, you know, just for, like everything that Bob kind of hit on, so. Yeah, I mean, just, just really quick. Our wall system, I mean, it's it's rated to massive seismic load. I mean, they've they've actually put dynamite inside inside a smaller uh, mass or structure and done serious testing on this uh, on our wall system. It's rated to 200 mile an hour winds. Yeah. Um, it's just not going. I mean, category I want to say eight, but I'm going to say five for sure. Hurricanes. I think it was five. Uh, earthquakes, all that kind of stuff. These, so that's really good. Yep. Um, Lino has a question. Uh, can the tiny homes be hooked up to an RV or city hookup? Well, yeah. So, <clears throat> I don't know, you want to answer this? Um, yeah. I mean, the way that all of our homes are, um, we all, all of our homes come with standard RV connections. Um, so, you know, there are options for uh, toilets and stuff like that, but uh, primarily you're going to need a fresh water connection, um, electricity, and then um, a sewer or septic for your black and gray water. But we can, uh, you know, factor in composting toilets and things like that to get around that sewer connection. So hopefully that answers Lino's question. All right, so we're going to open. Anybody out there that um, had contacted us earlier in the day and wanted to call in for a question, uh, <clears throat> and I encourage this for everyone, um, you know, as we do, we're going to try to do this every week. Um, we're trying to give as much notice as possible. Um, so anybody that we talk to today that wants to call in, feel free to call in. Uh, you have the information and uh, we'll answer another couple questions. And then if somebody calls in, then we'll, sure. we'll answer their question. Okay. Um, another question here. Um, Tires on the tiny home, lifespan of them, obviously they degrade over time, not only with use, um, special process with parking to help extend the life of the tire. Um, how does someone change the tire? Um, so I don't know if you want to take that one. All right, so as far as the tire stuff goes, <clears throat> what you're going to have is uh, 
is you have a couple of different ways of going about this. So one way to go about it is to completely take the wheels off, block and, and tackle the whole, the whole trailer. And there's, there's tons of videos online. It's a very in-depth way to go about this on, on this forum today. Um, we can try to find more information and get that posted on our Facebook page. But, so you can take the wheels off, you can chalk and block it all up. The other thing you can do is they make styrofoam wedges that kind of go around the tire and kind of cradle the circumference of the tire to help with flat spots. Um, one thing that I would kind of stay away from is deflating the tires. If you're gonna keep the, the, the tires on the tiny house, um, you can do the foam blocks, but I would leave the air pressure alone because if you take the air pressure out and the tire kind of flattens out, that's when you're gonna get extreme dry rotting and cracking that comes into play. Um, that's the best way I can answer that. Okay. Um, vale wants to know, alternative energy options, can you add solar panels? Have you heard of Tesla home batteries? Any experience with them? Um, yes, we can add um, solar panels to any home. Um, you know, to get it to um, to work correctly, we definitely have a process that's uh, engineered for that. So, uh, feel free to email us; we can provide you more information with that. Um, I know Bob's had more uh, experience dealing with Tesla. I think you actually reached out to Tesla, I believe. I uh, call them hours. every month, actually. <laughs> so they're on my weekly, uh, they're on my monthly call hit every every month. And what that means basically is. So I call them and ask them if there's been any updates to the Tesla battery system, the Tesla uh, roof tiles, all that kind of uh, cool stuff. What they continue to tell me is one, the roof tiles are still, um, they're still being wait, there's, we're waiting for them to be released like regionally. And second, um, they only want them on permanent structures. They, they didn't feel comfortable with the fact that they were mobile. <clears throat> so hopefully that answers that. Yeah. But as soon as we know, as soon as we have more information on that, we're definitely going to, you know, obviously let you let everyone know because I want to start using that system as soon as possible. As soon as it's available, we're going to start using it. Anything else? That's it. You got anything else? All right, well, since nobody, I think we got a caller. Let's see. I'm getting a message on my, on my computer here saying, uh, tried calling, not working. There it is. What's happening? You're on the talking uh, tiny tips and tricks. Who's calling? Hey, how are you? Good. How you doing? Can you hear us? Love your brand. Love your product. Um, super interested in the in the tiny house. Man. So uh, kind of exciting to hop on with you guys, considering you know your your weight in the field and, and in the niche. So. I don't know if this is going to be a silly question or not, but um, I figured I'd ask it. Um, is there a way, or I'm sure there's a way, but what is the best way to secure your tiny home to prevent theft or something like that if you were away for, you know, X amount of time? Um, we just had that yeah. actually the other day. Yeah, we can, we can re uh, re revisit that answer, though. Um, there's a couple of different different methods. Um, all of our trailer chassis um, have tie down hooks that are welded to the actual structure itself. So if you really, you know, and it's, so it's gonna be like a, it'll double as like a hurricane or tornado strap you wanna tie down to a pylon, but obviously you can chain that down to something. Um, uh, an easier way is um, on the front of the tongue, you wanna talk about the removable, was it a coupler? Yeah, so on the, <clears throat> All of our, tra on our trailers anyway, and most of the manufacturers out there have adjustable uh, tongue hitches. So the front can be modularly moved uh, up or down to create a more balanced um, ride for the tiny house when it's hitched up to a vehicle. So what you can essentially do is you can pull that 
that hitch completely off there. So there'd be no way for them to actually hitch up to the structure. I mean, they'd have to be extremely prepared. Yeah, I think they'd have to know to about do, that for sure. Yeah, right, so there'd be some recon involved. So at least then you know if it got stolen, it'd be your relative or, yeah. or somebody you knew. Interesting, awesome. Well, thanks guys, I, I, I appreciate that insight kind of put some uh, fears to rest as far as, you know, actually, you know, making the jump sure. to, to pick up one of these. So I appreciate you guys and, and I appreciate what you guys are doing for the community. How'd you hear about us? Uh, actually, um, it ended up being a Google search. So cool. um, I was just searching through tiny home dealers and, and found you guys and liked your site and liked your product and yeah. All right, cool, man. Well, thanks for calling in. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you, guys. You take care. All right, you too. bye. Bye. So... Um, we do we I thought I just saw another question come in. No, nope, that was it. Nothing on my end. Nothing on your end, nothing on this end. Well guys, it's been fun. Uh thanks for doing this for us. This is the first one. We're gonna try to do more of these. Uh and just kind of we're gonna put them up on YouTube as well, so they'll just be kind of like in one simple place where you can go and, and research what we're doing. And sure, and if you guys have any questions for any future uh, um, episodes, you know, go ahead and leave them in the comment section um, below the video here. And that way, um, once we do this again, we can revisit some of those newer questions and uh, have everything prepared for you and be ready to go. Yeah, because obviously, you know, there is a delay, guys, to the, to the by the time it leaves, the, the camera goes to the computer and we see the comment, there's a huge delay, so, yeah. um, to try to keep it as flowing as possible we'll we'll record your questions and and uh and if you want to come on the show too you know email us and we can get you the contact information to do so uh as far as the call-in number the extension you got to dial and so forth uh to get right here on the polycom so uh we look forward to it we'll do it again uh we might depending on how many questions we have we might do this every day or we might do this once a week we'll sure. just have to see but uh we figured it'd be something fun to just kind of answer some questions for you. So uh, have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you later. See you guys.